All right, this is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com. It is October the 16th. It's uh, Tuesday, um, and uh, in about three more Tuesdays from now, it's going to be November 6, 2012, um, and uh, that's Election Day for everyone listening in the U.S., uh, and uh, we have Democrats to choose from, Republicans to choose from, and uh, there also is, I guess you could say, a wild card. Uh, wild card definitely can do a lot more than you know your standard cards, and, and that's uh, independent third-party candidates uh, that we're interviewing, where you'll see the largest collection of interviews of independent third-party candidates at libertarianprogressive.com. And today we're talking with uh, uh, Kenneth J. Hildebrandt, uh, running for uh, the U.S. House in District Number 5 in Virginia as a uh, an independent green and um and uh his opponent john douglas the democrat robert hurts the republican um you know running in the uh, parties that have a 10 percent approval rating in congress right now I, I mean if you don't mind the uh empires if you don't mind um the highest incarceration rates in, in the u.s uh, if you don't mind um, a growing 16 trillion dollar uh, debt and um and if you don't mind, you know, some people having, you know, good connections in governments um, and uh, an unequal level, uh, an unequal playing field and uh, the government be more secret uh, while um, our privacy is being lost all the time, then uh, then I guess everything's fine. You don't need to listen to this uh, interview. But, uh, Kenneth, good to talk to you today. And, um, and sir, uh, thanks for your time. And uh, so we can uh, explore what what you know you stand for what we might not hear and if you could tell us sir what motivated you to be in this election this year to be on the ballots um which you are and um also um uh a little bit if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and your district five or how it looks uh this year sir and and, and thanks and welcome to uh the conversation today sir appreciate it all right well thanks for having me on first of all thomas well there's a lot of uh things going on like you said the uh it's really terrible to pick between two evils we've been doing that or, the, or we haven't i haven't <laughs> but a lot of people have too many for the last 12 years and look at where it's gotten them you know they think that there's a spoiler the spoiler to me is voting for somebody who you know is evil i don't care if it's lesser than or greater than that and that's what we've had. What prompted me to run this time around was I was interviewing Jill Stein, who's a presidential candidate for the Green Party in D.C. And at the conclusion of the interview, I was approached by Carrie Campbell, who I believe is the national chairman for the Independent Green Party of Virginia. And he asked me where I was from. And I said I was from Southside, which is... Uh, that's the term they call this district, especially the south side of it, here in uh, Virginia. And he said, uh, did I want to run? He asked. And I said, no. And he said, do you have anyone else in mind? I said, well, no. <laughs> and then he asked, uh, well, do you know if this opportunity will ever be there again? And I took that as not just for me. And I said, no. I'll have to check with my wife, and I'll get back to you. And so we walked a few blocks and talked and so forth. And by the end of the day, I called him and said, you know, I'm, I'm in. And I've been in ever since. I had to get 1,000 validated signatures. Um, I made it through that and did that with a lot of help from my wife, Elaine. And, um, you know, that it's been a battle. But basically, it's been a battle of uh, being excluded. I've been included. Uh, you know, I had a TV interview. I just went for another TV tape taping today. But both of my opponents are not willing to meet up with me in a debate. I wonder why that I mean, is. You know, yeah, that's um, well, that's uh, typical. I, I, I wrote a book about this, actually, that for now is published freely at realitybeknown.com. And uh, debate exclusion is is the norm. I mean, it's so you're willing well, to debate. You're willing. I mean, you would debate oh, ten times if they asked you to, probably, right? Oh, of course. But they don't want to have people like me debate because I'll screw them up and spit them out, and they know it. 
I mean, when, for example, when the great uh, professor and linguist Noam Chomsky debated the former Dutch Minister of Defense uh, toward, <laughs> toward the end, which became the end of the debate, the minister uh, stood up, looked at his watch, and he said, I gotta go. <laughs> Why? Because he was humiliated. I mean, they can't defend their positions. They're indefensible. Yeah, I mean, they, they don't want that, to... That's why somebody like me who would go in there would show them up and spit them out. It's not that I'm that great. It's that they're terrible. But if you just see a debate between them, there are certain issues you will likely not hear brought up, one of which about the incarceration rate. We have the highest incarceration rate and total number than anybody in the world. We have more prisoners than China. Yeah, per capita... And in yeah, actual per capita numbers. and in actual numbers, exactly, yeah. in both. Okay, we put we blow them away. Now, in eighty, nineteen eighty, we were similar to other industrialized nations. But then, when Ron got in, then the drug war accelerated. Yeah, just say, um, say no to uh, just say no to um, y y y you know, uh, freedom. Yeah, just say no. Just say no to freedom. Exactly. Just say no to freedom. I mean, I would. You know what? Maybe it's a good idea to be a spoiler, like uh, a spoiler to everything that's rotten. I guess in a sense. Yeah. Um, a spoiler of what's rotten, exactly. Maybe we the should. The spoilers whisper. are the ones who, who are in there, in my opinion, and the spoilers are also the media censors who, off, and the other censors who keep people like me and others uh, like me out of the debates. And out of the public limelight. Well, if they keep you out of the debate, I mean, the, the, we are in a public debate. The debate's going on right now. By they basically are just running away. It, it's it's like so. You're in a debate right now. I mean, you're you're in the debate right very now, and and, and tomorrow, and, and yesterday, you were in the debate. Yeah. They're just um, that's their answer. I mean, that's their answer is just uh, walking away like that guy did that you're talking about against Noam Chomsky. So they're basically so basically you could say you won the debates because they're not uh, you, by default. Yeah, right. Yeah, they walked away. I mean, the first thing I said to General Douglas was uh, when I met him was uh, I'm looking forward to debating you, sir, and he said, "Well, I believe in the democratic process and so forth," and I wrote him. Um, I mean, I you're on the ballot, right? Facebook, and I said, yeah, I'm on the ballot. I wrote, I wrote him, and I said, well, you know, the, I reminded him of our first encounter, and I said, I guess I, I know what your word is worth now. Yeah, he believes so, in the democratic process, uh, but um, it, in order to have a, um, a, a good democracy, it, Thomas Jefferson said you have to have a fully informed and educated yeah. public. And um, I mean, he'll probably deny and say that it was the institutions that did it. But um, I don't know. You know, like, I mean, that's probably what he would say, but I know that he didn't, you know, like, both institutions were like, actually the one even let me know outright that, it would, that if I showed up, they wouldn't. Well, that's I mean, what me. Ken, what's, I mean, that, you're going to ruin their me. party. Yeah. I mean, if, if you get in there and win, you're not, I mean, you're going to stop all these, this crony capitalism and how are all their friends right. going to get all their money and how they're going to take away more of our rights and keep us in fear. And, yeah. you, you, you know, I mean, so, I mean, if you get in there, you're going to spoil all that. Right. And that's what they don't understand. I mean, that, that's the thing. I think that the 2000 election caused so much damage in labeling Nader as a spoiler. Let's say, to, all right, I've had several interactions. Well, with one person I'm spoiler not, is... I'm not a, impressed. I'm not impressed with him as a person. But can you imagine him going against some guy that could barely string sentences together? Which was George, which was Bush's state. I mean, they had a whole Bushisms came up because of him. The guy, you know, you called Africa a nation, Nigeria a continent. Uh, you know, you teach a child to read, and him or her will pass a literacy test. Uh, um, I mean, just, it just goes on and on. Well, you that's know, the, what happened the, 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 with Ross Ross Perot. I mean, that's why they stopped. Um, you right, know, that the they president. stopped with Ross Perot because they realized that somebody could make a dent. Yeah, because, I mean, he totally killed them at the debates and, um, in 92. And um, now a lot of local places do have debates, but a lot of them don't. I mean, it's a... They had in this district historically, and that's what I was upset with, that they had debates with people, but um, with, with third-party people or independents. And the last one that I attended in 2008, Robert Hurt didn't attend in protest of Jeffrey Clark being in. 
because, uh, or at least that's what I was told, um, because Clark was even further to the right than uh, than Hurt. But Hurt, I asked him in a debate the other day, he goes, I want, well, we'll talk after the election. I said, I don't want to talk after the election. I want to talk before the election. And my friend has it on film. I haven't, he, I sent the footage to me and I haven't even watched it yet. Yeah, what is, I so mean, it's exactly what he had said, but, but the guy made the mistake of walking toward the back of the room where I was. Uh, now, some places you can't even attend, or you'll get arrested, and I have this on my website, on my YouTube site. Wow. Uh, it, you know, it'd be actually, it, you know, shows this one guy being violently arrested. He had three ribs broke, but he sat on the stage, and they went and just ripped him off the stage and broke his ribs, and the other people just sat there. This was in Michigan. So he was a candidate? Yeah. So, so they could, so anyone else can go, but just not the other third party candidate can go. Yeah, and they claim that it's a private property, so they can do what they want. Well, I'm lucky yeah. that that being in the fifth district, this is you know, uh, Monroe and Madison were the first ones to race <laughs> for this seat, and uh, you know, like there's a little bit, you know, I'm down the road from. Uh, um, from Brookneal, where Patrick Henry lived, you know, he owned 90 people, but he said, give me liberty or give me death, you know. <laughs> but he owned 90 people. Well, you're you probably know? more in tune so, with most anyway, people, but, so if they're excluding you, then they're excluding um, all the public of District 5, except for two people, and it's funny how we have, um, you know, public officials that, uh, you, you know, all the debates are on private property, and um, so who's the special interest, um, and, and what, what, what is the outcome, like, what's the end goal of, of you, you know, what's going to be the consequences of these actions? I mean, who's Dr well, the drawing plan. Of the actions are this? severe. Yeah, whose blueprint is this? I mean, um, this is um, a blueprint for the people. Um, so, what are some um, issues that we won't hear from the demic? I'm, I'm looking at your platform, actually, and um, now also, can you please clarify because I'm used to he hearing the Green Party, but not Independent Green. Uh, the in Independent Green Party is a, is a party that was developed here in Virginia. They're okay. split off from the greed. Because, I mean, you know, like I said, I'm not a member with them. Their big thing is more trains, less traffic, which is applicable in the, uh, high, in the higher part, of the, part right. of the district. But it's not really applicable down here in the southern part of the district. But the Green Party but they're does the ones support who recruited you. me. Yeah, but they... Well, no, no, no. I'm independent from them. They're okay. independent from them. Okay. You know, I didn't even know that this state had their own Green Party, to be honest with you, until after I joined this race. And I've been very involved. <laughs> Okay, cool. I, well, really, I mean, it's I, it's all good. So I'm looking yeah. at your um, uh, issues list yeah, here. The, the issues, well, like you said, I mean, it's a very critical time. Um, you know, like they're they're steering the we're, humankind is headed in a terrible direction. You know, as per the concluding words of my book, by the quote from Dr. Mitchell, we're at a tipping point a bifurcation point and it's not clear which way it's going to go well, well let's but start with we, the last we one. are the ones yeah. who are going to determine which way it's going to go and it's up to us and there I mean here we are the, the biggest issue one of the biggest issues I'm bringing forth is industrial hemp right, which yeah, according to the 1938 public mechanics had 25,000 different uses and one of the uses is as a biofuel and it's way more efficient than any other biofuel out there you can just squeeze its seeds, put it in a diesel engine, and you're ready to rock and roll. When I asked Ralph Nader about this in 2004, he said it right, but he said it well. He answered one quarter of my question, only in deal, only dealing with the hemp issue. And um, well, and ask uh, Henry Ford. Enough, ask Henry Ford what he thought about hemp. Right. Well, he didn't say it with the, Ralph didn't say it with enough gusto, but he did say that it would bring billions of dollars of increased revenue, and. Um, you know, re, uh, reduce our reliance on foreign oil. So, um, you know, so I mean, it would be impacting. But you, you're not going to hear that from either uh, the Democrat or the Republican ever. No. I mean, even though it's common, can can hemp is is does hemp have any like uh, TH? You know, the properties that get small, people high? small minuscule. How much of it would you have to? How much? I think you have to smoke a telephone pole to get high. But telephone pole. Yeah, telephone but even pole. that. But even that is based on propaganda. Yeah. I mean, this was made illegal. Harry Anslinger was the main uh, person who, uh, one person, it can show what one person can do. And Harry Anslinger was a former prohibitionist. And Anslinger took it state by state to get it marijuana illegal. And then when he got it, made it all the 50 states, he went to the UN. <laughs> he went nation by nation. 
you know, but then he had other supporters behind him, including Rudolph Rand or, or William Randolph Hearst, who uh, had uh, a timber industry. Well, hemp was, you know, competitive with the timber industry, so he didn't want it. Yeah, it's majorly so, competitive with the timber industry. You could save like lots, lots of trees. Um, yeah, actually, and, the and, yeah. and Ford had a car. Not only, made, not only, they would run on hemp, but he also had a car whose exterior was made of hemp. Now it was mixed with something else. They have it on YouTube. You could see it. Uh, like it you can make plastic resins video. out of hemp, and you can, you yeah. could. They had the guy pounding on the trunk with an axe, and he couldn't even touch. He couldn't make a dent in it. Actually, Dodger Chrysler is remaking some uh, paneling out of hemp. Um, I think in the interior, you know, you can make um, uh, plastics out of hemp. Um, and, yeah. uh And and so um, yes, that's that, that's. But, very but it's legal for us to import it. So here they here they export all of our jobs with NAFTA, the World Trade Organization. Um, yeah, some of which Ross Perot tried to warn us about. Um, and, and there is like, somebody you mentioned before about, there is Rand Paul. Now, I, look, there's probably, I don't even know if I agree with half of the things he says. Probably not. Okay, but he does have a bill in the Senate now dealing with industrial hemp. But you need to have people in there who, who really make it real. Yeah. You know, and that's what I think that I can do better. I mean, when I asked Ralph, he was like, it would be nice if the two candidates about the multi-billion dollar crop. Well, what that else would can advance do? our nation's security by reducing our reliance on foreign oil. Thank you. Wait. And that's how he said it. Did we have, I mean, was that Ralph put, Nader? You know, you see, put, 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 put a little shot of, uh, give them some adrenaline, people, before he gets up there. You know? And what do you mean the two candidates? You're in the race. If you're not in the race to win, you're not going to win. Yeah, and, and it's... I mean, you know, come on. No one's going to vote for a cause. You're in the race to win. And if enough people choose you, you will win. Well, that's not true with the presidency because of the electoral Well, Congress has a 10% but, approval rating right now. Um, it yeah, is, they all need to get out. Everybody agrees with that. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, well, a lot of people say you have to change a paradigm before the, the, the votes start changing. I, I would say the paradigm has changed. The paradigm has changed because Congress, according to the Gallup poll for almost this whole last year, um, and we're ready into October, um, has a 10% approval right. rating. And, um, and the, so the paradigm's changed already. It's it's changed. It's recently changed. I mean, the, the, the Republicans had a full House um, can, and, and the Democrats had a full house with Obama. People forget Obama had a full house. They're saying like, oh, the Republicans are yeah, stuff and everything. But, but they had a full change? house the first two years. And um, so, so they both have had their chance. Now they now the result is a 10% approval rating. And um, so is, the, is it quick enough for that change for the paradigm to actually reach reality? Because, I mean, because if it reached reality, you would get elected. You're the only alternative right. candidate. Well, I see two yeah. barriers to to uh, um, to a better world. One is ignorance, which can be overcome rather easily, I think, because none of this is rocket science. The other is apathy. Oh boy, that's a much tougher barrier to surmount. And fear, apathy, and fear, and despair. Yeah, fear. Yeah, fear is in there. Fear is in there too. They're they're unwilling to step out. Uh, you know, a Stanley Milgram, I forget the... the you yeah, know, the Milgram experiments. Yeah, right. Well, YouTube. that obedience to authority. But he also had another study, and I don't have the materials right in front of me, but it had to do with, like, if one person looked up, maybe one out of 25 would. But, you know, you get a number of people looking up, and nearly everybody will look up. So, you know, we're, we're you know, they'll follow if we get enough people looking up. <laughs> you know, and it's interesting that you brought up uh, Obama... Um, and when he had a full house and all that. The biggest question, the number one question that was brought to his attention in his so-called town hall meetings was marijuana. And they said, why don't you make this legal so it will advance our economy and all the other reasons? And he goes, uh, well, I was asked uh, if I thought, uh, I don't know what this is saying about my viewers, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but I was asked if... Um, if, if I thought mar legalizing marijuana would help the economy, <laughs> and my answer is no. No one asked you that. No one thinks you're a god of, uh, of economics or something. They told you that. They told you it would, it would advance the, you know, it, it would advance the economy. But he turned around and asked me if they thought he thought it would help. 
No one asked him that. Well, I think what the is main he, the issue master, is the I, master brain or something. So here are his his constituents. The main question posed to him, he turned into a mockery. Yeah, he sure did. He sure did. It's and he also I mean, turned into a, well, he also turned into a mockery. Um, the people who are, are you, you know in, incarcerated right now. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I mean, me real that's people. Bad, bad for, you know, real, real people living in a cage. Yeah. I mean, you know, and this is one thing that I bring forth that I don't hear anyone else really say, and that is that if you're bringing those people to jail, and that means that that leaves that many more real criminals like pedophiles, rapists, and murderers and whatnot at large because you're busy apprehending people who haven't done anything but something that you arbitrarily deemed illegal. That's exactly right. You know, it might not right. be good for you, but, you know, like, who cares? Like, you either is eating fattening food. There actually there's a lot of benefits with marijuana. So it's, it's based on nonsense. And they're leaving that many more criminals at large. Yeah, victimless As crimes. a result. That's just crazy. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's, it's total lunacy. So it's like, you know, do you want to continue voting for lunacy? You know, then go ahead and, and pick, you know, one uh, this lunacy versus that lunacy. But it's still lunacy. It's a you vicious know? circle, and uh, and it's time to get out. Um, and uh, we do have alternative candidates um, in 70% Definitely. of all districts. Uh, I, You know, so all across the country, here's an idea. What if... What if 50-plus uh, candidates that were not Republicans, Democrats, who are on the ballot, who are going to take their oath to the Constitution sincer sincerely, unlike um, the Republicans and Democrats who passed the um, two provisions in the National Defense Authorization Act, December 31st, right. 2011? I mean, that's an right. abomination. That's a pure abomination, and it yeah. is, uh, it, it's voting against the Constitution. Exactly. I mean, now, now, I mean, they can take you at any time. And this happened under President Change's clock. I mean, it's crazy. And from what you, our conversation, my conversation with you, and I haven't had time to verify this yet, but, you know, about that it, it, it was Obama's want, want that he did this. Because I know that Levin and McCain were the ones behind it. Now, my, I bumped, did not bump personally into Levin, but I ran in a run of one of his opponents that when I was doing because I've been doing this a long time it's back in 2002 and he had hogged all the pack buddy so he's you know pretty much indebted to a lot of people it seems to me and he was one of the ones I'll put the that. link in the description um, of, the, of this uh, interview yeah yeah so I'm um so yes, uh, it, it, it's like the National Defense Authorization Act is. We have a National Defense Authorization Act every single year, but there's two right. provisions added into this, like um, being able to, you know, detain um, U.S. citizens uh, without any crime charges, uh, you know, evidence against them, uh, yeah. you know, a speedy trial um, with their a jury of their peers, being able to be plucked up by the military at that on U.S. soil doing police work, yeah. um, uh, getting rid of due process, habeas corpus, the things that people struggled, died for, and uh, for, centuries. For, for, for centuries, yeah, absolutely. I mean, brother against brother, you, you know, just all this for, I mean, for the why would they need that? have dignity. Why would they need to have some, why would somebody, why would they need to take somebody who they, they can't even, they can't even question this person in public? They don't even want, or they don't want the questioning of this person to be public knowledge. They just want to take him out or her out. What, what possible reason could they have to justify that? You know, not to be God on Earth, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, like what's the and you know the, the United States ceases to be the United States at that point. I don't, you I know, mean, this is the land of liberty. How is that liberty? That's not liberty. That's liberty not, you know, is being able to live the way you want to without being bothered, and that's not liberty. Oh well, we're not going to use it. Well, then why did you? go through so much to get it passed. Well, that's the reason why we go to, you know, wars in the first place, right? Um, and uh, it's supposed to be um, to protect supposed to be. those those freedoms, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, they're, and they're eroding from the inside and people don't even know it. So, I mean, and the president it, signed it, that... Ignorant, apathy, and, and like you said, greed. I mean, I mean not greed, fear. And it, you so, know, it, it is fear. People are so fearful. It, it ought to be called the age of cowardice. I mean, it really is. It's unbelievable. People are just, they're scared to stand out and say, wait a minute. Well, we need another you know, age even, of enlightenment. Even though, that they're, 
And, 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 it, it, we need another ace on the line. Well, no, what do. better time than, you know, the internet and the instant communication? I know, we've got, it, we've got it right there in front of us. Yeah. My wife and I put out a, a video that's no longer up. Um, it was a short uh, documentary type video. Um, it was called The Grandest of Lies what? and Untold Truths at the height of the information age. And in that, I mentioned that, look, on the, on the front page of the New York Times here, this was back in 2004 when we put the move. I don't even know the paper, so the paper was 04 or before. And it says, in front page, a tiny Arab state, Webb takes on ruling elite. And I said, isn't that what I've been saying needs to happen here? We have the web, people. I mean, so even if they well, don't... it will happen. It's just natural. I mean, the natural thing to do is not to be, you, you know, lay down like that, like um, like property of the government. But it will happen if they don't kill us all first by destroying this entire world. Like, if they don't do that, then yes, we can watch it happen. We can participate. But we don't know how much time we have left. It's a thin atmosphere. I remember one of the recent astronauts was up there and said, she looked from it and said, boy, that was thin looking down on it. It's a thin atmosphere and we're ruining it. Well, you know, we're ruining it. And yet we have safe alternatives, yeah. you know, for energy that we're not using. Well, we're going you know, to war for ruin. oil. We're going to war for oil, so, I mean, uh, that that's, you know, we're... And why drill for it when you can grow it? And, you, and it would give, you know, farmers the shot in the arm that would help a lot, a lot of those jobs we lost or... Yeah, you're talking about hemp. ...in the World Trade Organization. Yeah, hemp. Industrial hemp. You know and, what? And, and, it, and hemp seed oil. If, if you were to design, like, if you're... To, 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 like, a, a genetically modified crop that would be perfect, that would grow ethanol, make plastics, have a good protein, not need right. as many fertilizers or pesticides, et cetera, yeah, et cetera, it. you would design it's there. hemp. Uh, I mean, it's hemp... It's already there. Yeah, it's already there. It's, it, used uh, to be, it used to be illegal in the state of Virginia before the nation was founded not to grow hemp if you were a farmer big enough. Farmer. Thomas Jefferson, I think, grew hemp, didn't he? And George Washington. Oh yeah, yeah, they they were big hemp. Advocates. John Adams said, like, if you're, it's your duty. And uh, I mean, we're just, um, you know, promoting the some things. Where that have we gone? Did. Where have we gone? We've to make gone it, to make, and here, anti-American. We that's where it's gone. It's gone totally anti-American. It's gone totally anti-constitution. But the economic. Everybody talks about the economy. The economy. Well, here's one thing that you can do right now. I mean, there's other things you can do, okay, like get out of the wars and so forth. Yeah. Um, but here's one thing you could do right now. You know, that that's, to me, not controversial in the least. Let it be legal. Let them grow it. Let's get those crops out. Let's get those products. Let's increase productivity right here, right now. Yeah, let's export instead of importing. And um, so what yeah. about um, small businesses, uh, taxes, and small businesses? What do you think about small businesses and tax, small mid-sized businesses, and just businesses in general because they're important to this country, and uh, taxes? Well, I'll tell you, I, I, my focus has been on individual taxes, which has changed drastically in my lifetime. When Eisenhower left office, that was when I was born, the upper 1% were taxed 91% of their highest income. Well, now they're taxed 35%. That, it's been, a, it's been a process. Well, basically, Kennedy hacked it to 70, and then, and then from there, Reagan took it to, to 50, and then he took it to 28, which even senior Bush realized couldn't, couldn't, they couldn't maintain that. Voodoo economics. So they raised it, yeah, so they raised it back to 39.6 where it remained during the Clinton years until uh, uh, Bush too lowered it to 35. Okay, now here's what I'm saying. Times have changed. $250,000 is not the same as a billion dollars. So I think that top 1% category needs to be broken down again mm -hmm. in the, in the, in the subcategories. But at the top, yeah, they ought to pay. People say, well, they're paying X amount of the taxes of the whole. They have all the money. That's why. How do they make their money? They make their money via two resources, or two, -ish, two ways that I know. Earth's resources, human labor. We're not importing either one from Mars. How else does somebody make money? You know? I mean, there isn't any other way. So That's you're, how it comes. You want to they return to, from, like, the Clinton levels? Is that it? Or the Reagan no, levels? No, I think that it should go back to... No, I think it should go back to the Eisenhower levels, with the exception of that now 250000 is not... I mean, it's a lot, but, that, you know, tax them, like, maybe 45% or something like that. And, um, 
uh, you know, and then and then from there go up uh, to the ninety percent, or not the ninety percent, probably the seventy five percent. And the reason why that is is because I feel that the thing that will save Social Security right now is to remove the okay, cap. Okay, so you want to be responsible. You want to get remove that? the cap, and then that'll add another fifteen percent on because these people who after one hundred nine thousand or whatever it is aren't paying anything towards Social Security. I mean, the, the reason be, for this is to get a balanced budget. I mean, that's your end goal, right? Well, yeah, we got to balance the budget. My end goal is to have a, a more reasonable society that certainly, I mean, I had my own business. I was a chiropractic physician for 13 years, and I had to balance my budget. <laughs> right. Now, do you think, like, maybe after the bu budget is balanced, some of those, you tax, like, we might think of a whole new tax system, possibly? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Let's just do that. I'm just looking at the at what we can do right now. I'm not looking that far down. But the, you could put a provision pipe. in there that says, like, once a budget's balanced, then these could revert back to something else or something like that, maybe. But but I, you, we have to either we have to raise taxes or you know increase revenue. To we need to get well, out of this taxes, debt. Raise taxes to the to those who need it raised. Well, hey, I would be for that. I mean, if it, if it's for like, I mean, a period of if it's for a purpose. I mean, to 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 like um you know get rid of this debt for a time period of like maybe ten years or something. They've been riding off our backs for years and years. How do they make their money again? I mean, you know, seriously. Now we uh, no, 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 somebody I respect. I respect. You're, you're you're providing a solution, and I respect that. I mean, we don't. You, you know what? I mean, that's a solution. What about now? We do have to um cut as well like where do you think we can cut uh, to me well militarily obviously how much do you think we could cut from there i uh, you know i don't i can't tell you off do the you think like 2003 head. levels which would be a pretty much um i i you know i'm not even I, I would think that we could we could cut quite a bit more before even 2003 levels okay okay we have enough uh you know we, we spend more militarily than the rest of the world combined well, that's a huge, I mean, that's more of a cut than any Republican ever will. That That's like, you know what, that's about, I don't know, probably about, well, they've never really provided any cuts, but but what, what they claim to provide, you know, that's like about, you know, 100 times Well, remember, the, in the 90s, the whole thing was about the hollow military. Well, at least nobody's talking about that anymore. You know, I mean, seriously. Yeah, yeah they were saying was, that. Um, yeah, they were saying that. It was going around like, you know, it was true. Yeah, you know, we we need to make it a safer world, and we're not going to do that with more nuclear arms. They were so proposing forth. a crazy bill, like guaranteeing, like we would always spend two to three percent of our GDP on defense. And luckily, that didn't pass. But it was, I mean, that's just a insane, like kind of uh, weird bill. But um, we need to audit that too, and and, and the Fed, and um, so that's so you know that's quite a bit of issues there. I mean, domestic policy. Um, uh, marijuana is a huge uh, uh, a subject here. I mean, decriminalizing it, uh, cr uh, making or making it legal, making hemp legal, stopping all the uh, you and know. As far as foreign, as far as foreign affairs, you know, let, let's let's uh, let's have reasonable talks in in Israel and Palestine. You know, not not unreasonable talks. Maybe you know, try to let's trade. Let's, like the whole the whole rest of the the whole world has agreed on a peaceful settlement except for the U.S. and Israel. Do you think we should trade in the Middle East like we do to China, which is like a communist we're not country? Trading in, we're not trading in anything. I mean, but do you think we should? I'm saying that we should return to the pre-67 borders. No, I mean, I, I mean like trading like goods and services and stuff like that, products and stuff. Well, to, why not? Yeah, I mean to try to, because doesn't that usually increase relationships after a while? Well, I mean, I, I don't think our relationships are ever going to be healed over there as long as our foreign policy remains, you know, and they're looking at, you know, uh, these Apache or whatever they are, you know, <laughs> they're looking at, they, they know what where the machinery is coming from and they know why Israel is being so bold because they got us as a backup, and they keep putting expansion over security. But we don't... Uh, I, I, I had much. several talks with Noam Chomsky about this. I mean, there is an answer. You know, like he said, you know, it's just, it's basically, it's us and Israel who are stopping it. Well, what you is know, the answer? Happening. Like the Clinton plan? Pre, pre, well, pre, well, actually, Clinton had a second talk that uh, was brought to my attention by Noam Chomsky, and this may be after he even left office. Uh, it might have been immediately the aftermath. And it was in Taba, Egypt. And they came real close to a settlement, but the Israelis walked away from the table. And they didn't offer them, like, the first agreement, a bunch of sand. And that's what they did offer them the first time. And, they, and Arafat walked away with reason. 
because they offered him garbage. And later on, uh, you know, Clinton realized that. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to. So the I, first, so the first, so the first offering was nothing. Most people, you know, what the world agrees on is the pre sixty seven borders. They stole the country anyway. I had a roommate's uh, stepfather family. They just went in there in nineteen forty eight. Said, "You don't live here anymore. Bye." Well, I think it's just even having that debate. You know what I mean? People a lot more don't know that. Public they, they, think, they think that they were living in tents and they were nomads and that they really didn't have homes. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. And they were told to move out. You don't live here anymore. And now they're, they're treated like, you know, like, like, like they're not even human beings. You know, they're, they shoot their yeah, kids, do you think that's they realistic? shoot their water towers. Yeah, yeah, I think it's realistic. If you got the whole world, except for the U.S. and Israel. Well, the Clinton one, I think, was pretty good, and, and they were... Not the first one. Not, not the, first. the first one. Okay, well, maybe the second one, then. Um, well, the second one in Tomba, but nobody knows somewhere. about that. He's nobody in- knows about that one. Because it's not, it's not really out there. I mean, the media can hide some things rather easily. I have talks on this with Noam Chomsky, like at several of them last year. I met up with him four times last year. Well, he's definitely probably, a, 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 an expert at this, and uh, so I've watched yeah. a, a couple of his videos on, on those. I'll check those out. And um, yeah. he's actually someone, we, you know, we might be interviewing too in, in a couple of months. And um, so uh, I, I, it, yeah, he's become a friend of mine. He's a great guy. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing this. Well, uh, you know, I mean, I, I was introduced to him. It was on PBS in the middle of the night, a broadcast, because, uh, you know, it was censored from the daytime. And uh, that's what I, when I realized then, that politics could be dealt with scientifically. Well, what what is that and, one popular um, that uh, video that he had? Man, you... Manufactured dis- consent. Manufacturing consent. Noam Chomsky. That's media. Yeah. yeah. If if you want to, if you want, if there's, I think, if there's anything to pick out, and, and you don't feel like reading a book, you just want to watch a video. Just watch I've that seen video. It over a hundred times in the nineties. I just had it playing continuously in my house. I wouldn't sit in front of it and watch it. I mean, sometimes I would. Yeah. Manufacturing you know, consent. That, that's a manufacturing good one. consent, right? Because the people's consent is manufactured by you know, the media who basically withhold things. Now he says, Chomsky says, there's an occasional nugget you find there in the media, and you got to take it when you have that and bring it to the attention of the people because they'll put it there and then they'll take it down and they won't talk about it anymore. And so you do security, find the occasional nugget. I'm sorry, Social Security, Medicare, you say remove the cap. Yeah, remove the cap. And for yeah. people that don't know what that means, that means just like saying like they, that if you make like a, you know, t- like let's say $100 million a year, that um, all of your income is uh, taxed. It's taxed. Right now it stops at like 109000 Okay. And um, I mean, remember, who are they, who are, who made their money for them? Not that they can only work twice. Actually, know, like that, that would hours probably a day. create a surplus maybe, I think. I think yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. That would yeah. be a surplus. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, what what about um, the Federal Reserve? I mean, uh, I, the, the, do you think that needs to be audited? Do you think we should have a well, national bank? I mean, uh, how should we? Well, that? obviously, that that's another thing. I mean, I haven't gotten that into that on my platform. And but I, as I understand it, is there was a secret meeting on Jekyll Island in 1913, and it was rushed through the Congress right at, uh, right before the Christmas break, and that Wilson later regretted it. And and uh, the Second Amendment. Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, now you gotta have. You know, it's like freedom of speech to me. You can't draw a line anywhere. You got a right to bear arms. You got a right to bear arms. Great. And uh, well, now w- one of the questions we've always asked in, in near the closing here is that um, I know you're you're in this. Uh, Campaign because this uh, guy came up to you and asked you if you wanted to run and, and kind of talked you into it in a sense or reasoned you into it and um, and we're glad that you are, um, but uh, through these last couple of weeks or months or whatever you must be you, you know things must be going through your mind um, and so I'd be just interested to know who are some of the figures that you've been um, or people um, that you've been thinking about recently and and why if you don't mind sharing that with us. Well, I've been sharing basically the people I've been thinking about are all of us. I mean, my thoughts have not... I've been doing the same thing for the last 12 years. It's just this time I'm campaigning myself. 
Great. So, I mean, I'm yeah. doing this. You know, I'm doing this for a better world for all of us, as we all spin on the same rock together. At the height of the information. Well, we need to be that offensive time. line. Yeah, I mean, you're you're the running back with the ball. We need to be that offensive line. That uh, you, you know, like 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 the Hawks. But I can never do it without others. That's the whole thing. You know, I I can't do it without others. I'm standing out here talking to you, and I can see the Milky Way. And when you look up at the Milky Way, it takes a hundred thousand years more than that for light to go from one end of that to the other. We're just a little speck in space, and I'm sure there's been other civilizations, and they've come and gone, and we're right at the cusp, and we better stop letting these people manipulate us and have our civilization die before it's time. We and can, we're really uh, at that point. And we're, we're living that moment now. This friend of mine who's done video interviews, I can't believe it, I met him online, he's 19 years old, he's pretty smart, but he's like, but we are living at an interesting time, and we are. We're living at a time where it's do or die. I mean, humans may not make it. Well, can you give me a... Is there any reason not to try to stop the vicious circle? Well, if you don't care about anything, and you don't care about people, yeah. you don't care about life, but, but, then but don't do anything. But we can nowadays because, I mean, the way to do it is to learn from the past and uh, to have uh, knowledge of history. And, um, and uh, we, you know, now we have, like, this library of Alexandria um, called the Internet, and it's right there staring at us every day. If you want the facts, if you want information, if you want knowledge. You can get it. You can get it, and, and, and not, like, never before. And, and um, Congress like never before. has a 10% approval rating. The paradigm has changed. This year, uh, 2012, what's going to happen in the year 2012? Maybe, I mean, let's make the news. Let's uh, say it's going to be shot, heard around the world where we elect uh, as many independent third-party candidates, um, and uh, that's what we'll be uh, reading about. Um, and, and then we got to keep continuing this. I mean, this could take 10, 20 yeah. years. It's, it's well, let's hope not. I don't know if we have 10 or 20 years. You know, but, I mean, I'm in it. I mean, I'm... I'm I'm in it, you know, it's a battle well, against before the uh, big two parties and become apathy the third and, you know, yeah, Excuse me? I mean, I was saying it could take 20 years before the Republicans and Democrats are the third parties, but it could be this year that we have a record number of independent and third party well, candidates. I mean, it better change fast. I mean, to me, I, I don't want to look 20 years down the pike because I don't really know. I see, you know, we ought to be able to know the past and we ought to be able to know what's going on, but none of us can predict what's going go, to happen. But we do know what course we're heading on. Well, it's not good. It's just a decision that and, needs and, to be made, and um, and just yeah. you know electing the most qualified candidates, and um, I believe. Well, that we better do it. I mean, that's like I mean, I don't know. Maybe I won't be alive two years from now to run. You know, I don't know. I, I mean, I, none of us, none of us knows how long we're going to be here. You know, so we know that we have this moment now. I used to be a track runner. Why not? And I was in that race. I was in that race. Not in two years from now or something. I'm in this race. <laughs> Yeah, I think you we know, deserve so I, it. So we, I think 2012, you know, yeah, no, I'm not going to quit if I, if, if, I, if I don't win. I hope to win, you know, and I should win. And if the information spread and people took it seriously, I would win. And so would the others yeah. who, who feel, with, you know, with similar positions and more, more reasonable people than, than the, these people in there who have a 10% approval rating, which shows that even though the manipulators have the media, they haven't manipulated them that much because, I mean, people feel it. They know something's wrong, and they know that things could be better. Well, one thing we can do for sure, detail. we can, we can at least deserve to win, and um, and that's what we got to do. And uh, so, um, well, is there any um, events coming up uh, or or other debates that um, you, you know people should you know call well, their the local? Well, the debates are over. Or, um, I, I, this thing I did an NBC five minute. Uh, taping today that they're going to put right on their news. Five minutes they gave me. And um, I did it unscripted, of course. <laughs> one take. Uh, you could do as many takes as you wanted. I was happy with one. I didn't know what I was going to say until I started, but that's just how I am. Um, I'm not lost without a teleprompter because I don't have a bunch of well, BS and, and time to put out there. You know what I'm saying? I know what I'm talking about. So some of these other people who are lost without a teleprompter, I'm not going to say who. Uh, you know, not that way. But, uh, you know, I mean, so that will be upcoming in the news uh, next week. And, of course, you know, what I think is that we ought to make the news over the next two weeks, three weeks, rather. You know, we ought to make the news. Let's make the news. Let's post on Facebook. Let's get active over the next few weeks. Yeah, and people like our, please... like our lives depended on it. I mean, yeah, we have people living in cages where they're raped and stuff. And I mean, like that's 
we've, we've got to free them. We've got to free them. We need an emancipation, another emancipation uh, proclamation here. I mean, right. seriously. I mean, we that's what we need. We need to free people who are in prison on our own, in our own shores um, for victimless crimes. And, uh, and they come out criminals. Like, like I know we're running out of time, but, you know, I had talked with... Uh, Senator Gravel, when I interviewed him in 2007, they don't go in criminals, but they come out criminals after they've been subjected to all this violence. Now, Senator Webb, who's leaving the Senate, and, um, you know, he said that he went to Japan, there was no violence between the prisoners and no violence between the prisoners and the guards. And he said, well, if they can attain that, we can too, but what do our shows do but laugh at people being raped? Well, it's not funny. You know, it's not funny. It's sick. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the, the days of the pillory were more sane. You know than, than what's going on now. Yeah, it's like Caligula or something. Um, yeah. You know, pretty much. Uh, that that. It is. Yeah. It is. It's like Caligula. It's like Caligula. And, and people well, it's should time call. That we advance. People should call these places that are hosting the debates and demand from them to uh, allow um, all the. Most of them are over by now. Yeah, they should. But you know, I don't think the debates are the be all end all. I've had other coverage, and with the uh, internet and so forth, we could overcome that. You know, I don't know how many people were eagerly going to sit down in front of their tube and watch the beat in this congressional but district. But this is the path of least resistance for freedom to flow. The U.S. House of Representatives, that's the emergency break yeah. in the Congress every two years. Right yep. now, we have another opportunity looking us in the face. I mean, not sometimes you're not always giving more and more opportunities. We're given another one every two years. This time, let's uh, just, um, yeah. y you know, mar mark the... Uh, the name in the ballots and uh well uh ken uh, it's been a pleasure um and uh thanks for your time a pleasure back thomas thank you i'll say goodbye to you after the interview and uh so uh you know godspeed and uh, you know uh, november 6 2012 sir great great let's all do it <laughs>